Anaphylaxis is a life-threatening systemic allergic reaction. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use a auto EpiPen. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. With anaphylaxis, some of the triggers can be caused from environmental, such as bee stings or from venom. Some medications can also produce an allergic reaction. One of the most common is your penicillins. And food, which is more common for the pediatric population, can cause this as well, such as nuts, eggs, dairy, shellfish, to name a few. So a systemic reaction produces an antibody response, which releases mast cells and basophils, which causes vasodilation and tissue permeability, which hence causes those signs and symptoms of respiratory. You can have shortness of breath. Integumentary, it can cause skin hives. Gastrointestinal can cause nausea. Cardiovascular can cause hypotension. And if it's a severe anaphylactic reaction, it can result in death. So prompt recognition is key in identifying these symptoms. EpiPens are prescribed for patients that are prone to anaphylactic reactions or get a severe reaction from any one of those triggers that I just mentioned. So we prescribe these medications, which is by a healthcare provider that has a license to prescribe it to a patient. And it's usually dispensed in two. Anytime you have an EpiPen, you always wanna make sure that you check the expiration. One should always be carried with the patient. The other one should be left at the second location, which is typically the patient's home. So how we administer this medication. So when you look at the actual vial, you wanna make sure that it is not expired and it is not tampered with. When you're actually holding the vial, you wanna make sure that the blue cap is facing to the sky and then the orange is facing downward, kind of think of volcano, so it's facing to the bottom. And the orange part is where you're going to inject that into the patient's leg. So the preferred area where you're going to inject this is into the anterior lateral thigh and it's because you have your vastus lateralis muscle there it has most it's most vascular lots of blood flow and when you actually inject the medication it will increase absorption and work effectively. You can repeat this once every five to 10 minutes. If you've already given two doses and you're not getting any better, the ER should already be en route, the paramedics, and you should be on your way to the emergency room. However, when you administer this, if this is a true emergency setting and you do not have time to drop your pants or if someone is helping you administer this, you can actually administer it over the patient's clothing, which is okay if you need to do that and it's an emergency setting. So when you are holding the actual vial, you're going to place it in the proper area of the patient's thigh. And once you firmly place it in, you're going to hear a click and you're gonna hold it for three seconds. After the three seconds, you're going to slowly remove it out and you're gonna dispose of in the sharps container. There has been concerns as far as wrong locations that it has been placed, such as the glutes. You don't want to place it in the glutes because it can cause um, gas, gangrene. You want to make sure that you don't accidentally prick your fingers because it can cause necrosis of your fingers. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.